All right, hi everybody. Um, so I'm Paul Frields, the engineer, Fedora Engineering Manager. And I'm Ryan Lech. Notably from the Fedora Engineering team, also the design team in many other places as well. The Fedora Magazine. And from the Fedora Magazine, yeah. So, so we both work on the Fedora Magazine and entering the room right now to great applause. That's <laughs> excellent. This is uh, Justin Flory, who is our- Hello, editor in chief editor-in-chief of the magazine, so yeah. I, I'm gonna pass this over to you, but I, I thought for like, maybe just for a minute we could describe um, for those who aren't familiar. Actually, is there anybody here who is not familiar with the Fedora magazine? Okay, not, okay, great. Okay, there's a couple people. So the Fedora magazine is essentially um, our way of producing news and outreach for the vast number of people out in the world who use Fedora on a regular basis. So it's not designed um, specifically for contributors. There is another magazine-like entity, the Community Blog, if you guys are familiar with that. There's communityblog.fedoraproject.org, and Justin also takes a, uh, a, a hand in, uh, in running that as well. Um, both of these are WordPress instances with some custom styling to make them look very dazzling to the eye. And uh, we use these magazines to reach different audiences. The community blog reaches internally to more Fedora contributors. The magazine is designed to reach outward to a lot of users and hopefully some potential contributors as well, but we really concentrate on, on reaching users. So we're here to talk a little bit about magazine and how to, you know, what we want to do to get people involved and hopefully encourage some ideas and stuff. So I'm gonna pass this off to you. If you guys want to move up, you're welcome to that. The, the lecture, like we didn't mean this to be a lecture. There's no slides. It's a conversation. So, so how many of you have written for the Fedora magazine at any point? If you know about it and if you've written for it. So a couple people. Cool. So the, there's a general process that we recommend people to follow for writing for the Fedora magazine. And part of this process involves you kind of penciling out your ideas in the form of what we call a pitch. And that's to the benefit of us, of having a conversation between you, the writer, and us, the editor team, to kind of have a, uh, think about the, the topic you're writing for and have a conversation if it'll be a good fit for the Fedora magazine. So that way if it doesn't, if it's something that might need more feedback or, uh, or it needs feedback or has something to talk about before you get started writing it, um, we can do that before you've put in two hours or three hours of your time writing a really cool article that might not just be a good fit for the Fedora Magazine audience. So the benefit of the pitch is that it helps you also outline your ideas. And what our recommendation is, is to write like a two to three sentence summary for what your article will be about. What the, the point of it is, what you're trying to, to do to teach people, and then to have like a, like a bullet point list like intro, and then like a couple points of like the body of what you're trying to cover, and then just to kind of like have a, an idea of what you're trying to, to pencil out and write. Um, so once you do that, the next step would be to reach out on our mailing list or, or an IRC to let us know that you have the pitch ready and that you'd like someone to check it out. Um, and we meet Thursdays at 5 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Um, I can't remember the UTC time. Um, yeah, 2100 UTC. Um, but if you can't... <laughs> um, so even if you can't, yeah, so if you can't make the, the Fedora Magazine meeting time, that's fine. Um, just as long as we know that you have a pitch that's ready to be reviewed, we'll always go through those at the meeting and we always have them in our meeting minutes and we'll reach out to you if you need extra feed, if there's more feedback that we have for you on the pitch. But just letting us know that you have done it and that you're ready for it to be reviewed helps us too, so that way in our meeting, even if you can't make it, we'll at least cover it and get some feedback to you or approve the pitch for you to... I'm sorry, yeah, Fedora-Magazine is our IRC channel. That maybe might be something worth mentioning too if you've been around for a while. Um, we've separated out from the marketing team a while ago too, so if you need to get in touch specifically with Fedora Magazine folks, the best way is through our own mailing list or in IRC at Fedora-Magazine. Um, but so like, uh, with the pitch process, once you have that done, 
uh, and we let you, and we have that conversation. The next step will be going ahead and moving forward with your draft. Um, and is there anything I'm missing there? But once you have your draft done, uh, again, it would just be kind of letting us know once you have it complete, and then we review it at an editorial meeting and give you some, any extra feedback, or if it's ready to go, we'll get a featured image for you ready to go and get it onto the schedule. Um, but that's just kind of the rough template, a rough kind of process for creating and writing for the Fedora magazine. Um, and I just think the pitch process is a really great way. It, it, sometimes it gets skipped over by a lot of people, but I think it's a really great way for you to also, for both us, the editors, and for you, the writer, because it gives you the opportunity to kind of, kind of prepare your thoughts about what you're hoping to go forward and try to write through. Like, even like for us, I think a lot of us also do the same thing. Like when we're going forward and writing an article, we'll like kind of map out what are the big points we want to cover. We'll do like the big headers, like what are the big things that we want to write in this article. So it's really something that, it's not just that something we throw to people at the first point where they're writing their article. I think it's something that really is, is as, a, as a writer, it definitely helps you to kind of have that full idea of what you want to write about. Because I think even all three of us probably have a process similar to that where we're kind of mapping out our thoughts before we just dive in and go into an article. Um, did I miss anything there? No, I think we were just going to talk about some of the, maybe some of the pluses and minus, like plus one, minus one type ideas for what we've seen in pitches that might help. Or the, the pitch. Well, the pitch and then when you go to do the draft, and you take it to the editor, and the editor will review it. Uh, yeah. After that, uh, what do you do? So once you submit, once you've written your draft, and you've let us know that you're ready for it, like it's ready to be published, I'm done writing it, mm -hmm. um, we'd review it at the magazine meeting. If it looks good, then we'll go ahead and start getting it prepped and ready. We'll get the featured image done and get it onto the schedule. Um, if we have feedback for you, we'll reach out to you. If you aren't in the meeting, or if it's at a bad time, we'll just reach out to you uh, via email instead and, and kind of get that feedback to you. Um, yeah, so typically at a magazine meeting, we'll, we'll go through most of the draft and have them reviewed first and get our schedule ready for the week. We aim for um, typically three is our sort of baseline. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so three posts is kind of our baseline for the week. Um, Monday... Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Sorry, time zones. Time but yeah, zones, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So mon Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we typically try to post it about um, at eight oh eight hundred UTC, which is um, a time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know it is about uh, four p.m. Australian time. But um, yeah. So and then um, if there's if we go above that, then yay. But yeah, so typically at the, ma at the meeting, we'll go through um, most of the proposed and drafts and sort of map out our schedule for the week and get those done. And then we'll go through the pitches towards the end of the meeting. So we, so we pretty much have our schedule mapped out on a Friday for, for, the, nec for the next week. So. Um, yeah, give or take. So with, well, so, so actually, um, you know, thanks to the way that the page is designed, um, I think we have something like either nine or 12 articles that sit on the actual front page at any one time. So if you write something, it will usually be on the front page for you know, three, three weeks, maybe more, right? Um, I, I, and the only exception to the way we do that is when we have something really, uh, really important, something critical like the release announcement, right? Fedora 26 was released. We'll pin that post at the very first position, and it'll stay there usually for two to three weeks. But that doesn't push everything off. It just simply means that any other articles we publish will be, they'll start at position number two. But because it's a grid view, um, people will see articles for a number of weeks. So if you, if you have put work into you know, going through, you know, you've pitched the article, you've drafted it, you've had it reviewed, and it's gone up, um, it, it won't fall off like four days later or something like that. It will, it will be on the front page for quite a while. Um, something else that we do, I mean, this is kind of behind the scenes maybe more. I don't know how, how much people care about the process. But we use some plugins um, in the magazine that allow us to optimize for search engines 
um, and it really has helped us over the last couple years promote our content um, to where search engines like Google or or uh, uh, Yahoo or whatever, um, DuckDuckGo, if we use that, or you know, they those engines now are are bringing that content further up in searches. Like for instance, we were we were talking today about one of our articles um, about i3, right? The i3 window manager. If you do a search, just a plain old Google search for i3 window manager on the first page of hits, um, you're going to find the Fedora Magazine article on i3. Even though there are hundreds of articles out there about i3 and how to use it, we're on the front page for i3 hits. And I think one of the reasons for that, well, I think there's a couple reasons for that. One of, is, one of them is it was a fantastic article. I think, was it William Moreno wrote that? Um, fantastic. He wrote a fantastic article. It's got screenshots. It's really good explanations. It's got lots of links. It's, it's something that, you know, is, has a, just has great content. Um, but one of the other reasons, I think, is because, you know, we also, as editors, you know, we take a look at things like search engine optimization, right, SEO. And we tune the article so that it gets a good score for SEO. There are tools that let us do that, and that way it helps promote that article and keep it moving higher in, uh, in Google page rankings. So that's another way of continuing to drive uh, traffic to the Fedora magazine. Um, so we help with that. We don't, we don't require authors to do any of that. We don't require you to know how to do any of that. We take care of that on the, on the back end. Now, we're always happy to teach people about it, though. That's fine. Um, we're happy to do that as well. But um, we don't require any authors to, to deal with that stuff. Did you want to talk, should we talk about the next one? Plus one? Yeah. So, well, so, so the question was about critical posts. How do we, how do we if, if there's a post that needs to go out with a deadline? Well, of course, we prefer that you let us know, you know, a few weeks ahead of time, right, so that we can actually work it into our schedule. Um, uh, we can do that in a number of ways. You can do it, uh, you know, again, notifying us via IRC, or Pound Fedora Magazine, um, on the mailing list, which is magazine at lists.fpo. Um, it, you know, you can always feel free to get in, get in touch with us on either of those places. And, um, you know, we can publish things with deadlines. I, I think one of the important considerations here, though, is, again, thinking about the focus for the magazine, right, which is not on contributors who typically we might set deadlines for, right? Our focus is on more on users and the general public. So it's, I, I think that's usually, like, that's an unusual occurrence for us to have deadline-related posts, other than maybe, you know, the release announcements or... Um, Right, classrooms, which are our timed events, right? We've been, yeah, we've been publishing those regularly, right? Anything that's that's targeted to users, though, if it's if it's time sensitive, you know, we just simply ask uh, that you, you know, let us know ahead of time, and we'll work it into our schedule. So, um, as we've done for for those series. Yeah. So so let me um I guess let's let's move forward and, and talk because you know we really would do want to motivate this conversation towards you know maybe a, a discussion of some ideas. Um, you know, just talking about pitches, uh, you know, that, that's really the first step. Um, one of our goals, I think, in having this session is to invite ideas from the folks who are here about um, uh, content that we might want to put together um, for, future, for future magazine articles or series. Um, and so before we do that, um, you know, we were talking at lunch today and, and thought it might be a good idea for us to um, give a couple examples of the kind of um, the the kind of factors that that lead to uh, pitches being approved or pitches being turned down by the editorial staff because we didn't want that to be a, a confusing issue like how do you know if your pitch is going to be approved hey my pitch was approved or my pitch was turned down and this other person's was approved why was that um, and there's a few reasons that we kind of mapped out earlier today um, one of them was scope right. So what works great for the magazine, is, and I think Ryan said something about this a few, just a few minutes ago, which is you know, you know, focus, you know, focusing the articles on a topic um, is really helpful. So for example, um, a pitch on, let's say a pitch on, um, hey, I'm gonna explain container technology. That is a very, very broad topic, and it's highly unlikely that an article that is short enough for people to read in a venue like the magazine 
is actually going to be able to cover that topic, right? But if someone were to come up and say, hey, I'm going to write a post that's going to teach you how to deploy an atomic host where you can put your containers, right, using Ansible, right? That was a recent, that was a recent example of a pitch that we did approve um, that concerned containers. So that it was very well scoped. In other words, it had a very specific goal and it had a very limited amount of technical process that it was going to have to cover. And so that's short enough for people to actually read and digest. Um, so that one got a, a plus one. Um, what's another one? Uh, I, I, I yeah, tips. Yeah, right. So I think some great tips when you're setting out to write your article, once you have the pitch done, like, uh, there's always questions I always ask myself when I'm going into an article. And that's thinking about who? Who am I writing this article for? Who am I trying, who do I want to see my article? Who am I trying to help? And then another question I'll ask myself will be, what is the goal? What am I trying to accomplish? What am I trying to teach? These are all questions that help you focus your writing in and make sure that you're writing to your target audience. When you know who you're writing for, when you know the goals of what you're trying to write about, if you're trying to teach something, you're trying to show someone how to deploy something or inform someone about something happening. When you can answer those questions and think about them when you're writing, it, help, it, it has a huge impact on the quality of the writing that you're putting out. Because when you can think about your audience and you can think about those goals of what you're trying to do, it focuses your writing forward in a way that it, it really, I don't know how else to word it other than it really does have an impact on. It's almost like you know what they know. Like you, if you can visualize like what your audience knows, if you know who you're writing for, you kind of know, you have an idea of the skills that they have, the abilities that they have. And so you, there are certain steps that you're gonna explain fully. Other steps in the process, you're going to assume that your audience knows because they are your audience. You've already visualized who they are. So you may not have to deconstruct every single point in the process to the extent that you would say, like if I was going to um, you know, try and you know, show my son how to, how to do a process in Fedora, that would be very, very different from the process that I say that I might show Ryan or, or Matt out here in the audience, right? It's gonna look very different. So I'd write two very, very different kinds of articles. So knowing who that person is who's gonna be reading and understanding like what their skills and abilities are helps you determine where you can uh, summarize as opposed to um, detail out. And I think also too, when it comes to, it came up earlier about like the length of articles, I'd say like at a rough estimate, 300 to 600 words is usually kind of right around like the sweet spot for having an article that will keep your readers engaged and uh, also generally be easier to write. I think there's a, there's a little bit of a misconception, I, I think, perhaps sometimes, where people are writing an article and like, oh, Fedora Magazine needs to be a formal article, I need to go in great detail, I need to have everything planned out, and it, it's, it has to be a process. And not only is that going to be miserable for you to write, but it's also not going to engage and click well with your readers. And it's, it, it, it's miserable to edit, too. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're setting out to write that, if... If it is, a, so going to a specific topic and writing to something that really has a, like, like with the example of like container technology versus deploying on atomic host with Ansible, completely different scopes. But at the same time, if you are writing to something that is really specific and it happens to be long, that's actually not always a bad thing. So in, in some cases, what we have done, or there has been an article where it is like it's a really great article, but it's really long. But maybe it has two or three different pieces in it. So what you can actually do with that is you can break it up into like smaller, each individual smaller pieces of an article. A recent example of that that was on the magazine a few weeks ago was like an introduction to Kubernetes on Fedora, talking about like the first one was just introducing it, like it's available on Fedora, you can install it, you can use it, and then the next article was about using uh, like a, a local virtual machine to test and use it on your laptop. So that was one idea that was actually like a one really long article that was that had two very specific points. But in this case, we broke it up into smaller pieces that were easier to read, and we had to end up having more content. We were able to spread that out over a longer amount of time, and it engaged a little bit easier with the readers because it was just less content to eat or digest all at once. And it also kind of made it, each article also kind of had different 
audiences a little bit too. In this case, for like the Kubernetes one, the intro one, if you had no idea about any of these things, it was helpful for you, but like if you had a little bit of an idea, then you could just look at the, the local, like testing it locally on your laptop, and you could kind of get a feel for diving into it that way. Um, yeah, I got another one. Chuck, you got one? Uh, he's just sort of leading into the brainstorming. But oh, yeah. so, so one more, I guess one more factor is the, the factor of the software that we cover. So the magazine is, is liberal about the software that we mention. Um, we try to focus on um, using Fedora, uh, whether that is to integrate or, or interface with services that are free or not, is, that's not really our concern. Um, we, of course, we, we love free software, big free software proponents, but we realize that a lot of the services that our users care about and use every day are not free. So for example, we will happily publish uh, information about how to use, let's say, uh, GitHub's hub CLI command to talk to GitHub, even though GitHub is not a fully free as in freedom type service. Uh, the same with uh, articles that are about, say, using Amazon uh, web services, AWS, not a free as in freedom service, but it's something that many, many people use, and they use Fedora to get there. Fedora is a great, uh, is a great system to be able to use um, for you know, managing your, your cloud-based applications. So that's what we really concentrate on is what do the users care about. At the same time, however, we do care about software in the platform and our preference is always to talk about the free software that you can get in Fedora. So for example, if you are doing uh, an article that uses a virtual machine to accomplish some task, our preference is not to recommend using, say, VirtualBox for that because you have KVM in Fedora and we want to promote that. We want to make sure people understand this is something that comes in the operating system and they can make use of it uh, uh, you know, right out of the box. Um, so I, I think, you know, just so describing that, our, you know, that's how we, we look at uh, the freedom aspect. If, so if people are coming to us with a pitch for an article, um, that's one of the things that we'll look at. We, we, uh, we will not turn down a pitch based on whether or not it interfaces with a non-free service, but we will look at the, the way that the process is working um, uh, technically. In other words, what is the author describing, and is there a way to do what they're talking about with software that comes straight out of the box in Fedora that you can install from the official repositories. Um, we also don't, uh, I guess, you know, the, the other, I guess the other note is that we don't, um, we don't usually, um, uh, promote uh, software repositories that contain material that is illicit in some parts of the world, right? The U.S. is one of many territories in the world where certain, you know, certain kinds of software are protected by intellectual property rights, and we don't want to put um, F the Fedora project, we don't want to put our sponsor Red Hat in, a, in an untenable position for that. So we do try to avoid um, dealing with software that is, in some parts of the world, not legal to promote. Um, so, yeah, that, but that's about it, right? If it's, but if you're talking about software that is legal to distribute, we, you know, that's fine. So, in other words, we'll, we're happy to deal with things like Google Chrome, but we tend to stay away from things like, say, the RPM Fusion non-free repository. Um, is there anything else we should mention there? That was about it. Oh, and Copers. Um, we, we, uh, uh, material that deals with uh, um, packages that you get from the COPER repositories. Um, we generally don't have a problem with those. We do like to include a caveat that just notes that COPERs are not an officially produced um, uh, source of Fedora material. Um, and that way people understand that what they're getting is, you know, caveat emptor, as they say. <laughs> We'll, zo we'll have to zoom in on that later, I think. Um, what else would it, I guess, what would it be helpful to talk about now? I guess just maybe talk about some, maybe uh, encourage some ideas here for, yeah, for contribution. Yeah, because we touched on startup at all. Which oh, yeah. Do you, wanna, do you wanna? So, oh, so we have one more category that isn't in our official workflow where, um, that has kind of dwindled over the, the past couple of months called starter pitches where, um, I think it was on IRC one day, we sat down and brainstormed a bunch of um, ideas where like these are great 
articles that someone knew or even me when I'm, I, need, I need an article and I, I don't have an idea for one that I can grab it and just go and it's an already approved pitch. So it's um, yeah, basically ready to go. It's an idea that, yep, it's good to go. Um, so that's what, um, that's what I think we were th um, thinking about um, doing a little brainstorm session now to just come up with some, some more ideas where we can just sort of throw some mud at the wall and see what sticks. And I think that, yeah. yeah. Does that sound good? Sorry, I'm saying yeah a lot. Yeah. yeah. From the information that you just learned in this workshop, that would be fantastic for the Fedora magazine. But if it's more about this session and kind of the people who are talking about or talking here and kind of the, what kind of topics we were covered, that would be more. I mean, you think about it. Who, who are you writing for? If you're writing for people who are Fedora contributors who are interested in Flock, your audience would be Fedora contributors. So you go to the community blog. But if you're writing for people who know cool things and would be ready to write an article, your audience would be a kind of a broader group of people. So it would be for the Fedora magazine, which is why I think like, the questions that you can, you can answer that question to your, for yourself even without asking. So they get to see more things about the blog. Yeah, exactly. It all depends. Who's your audience and what's your purpose? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to inform someone about how to write for the Fedora magazine or are you trying to inform someone about what was being covered here? That is where the line sort of, we, we sometimes straddle the line on the Fedora magazine because especially for sort of entry level community um, like where we actually want more people to come in. Yeah, so you can, yeah, that's where it's, it can get a, a slightly blurry but then there's other, other posts where you're like, yeah, that's definitely community blog. So I think there's been a few that we've, have gone through where it's sort of on the line, line but then yeah. it's like you try to frame it as, hey, are you not, it's to the non-contributor becoming a contributor more than a current contributor, so. Um, yeah, it depends how, how you frame it. Right, yeah. the audience and the purpose. Yeah. That's but, and then, the same question. But and then we also sort of try to limit the number of those posts because we know that the majority of our audience is um, yeah, not really gonna, yeah. gonna care that much. So um, they care more about tips about Fedora, so, and then yeah, if we can, yeah. Who's got some ideas? something that you're comfortable writing about or teaching other people, that's definitely something that we'd love to have your input on or anything that you think that you've been kind of like on the fence about or if there's something that you just think that you could talk about. Um, this would really be a great time for you to get feedback on those ideas too, if you have any. Um, or we can also kind of talk about just general starter pitches. Like one of the things that we just tried doing as an experiment a few weeks ago on the magazine, um, I don't know if any of you read opensource.com, but you might see some of these articles like, the top five terminal emulators on Linux or the best, one of the ones that we just ran uh, not too long ago was like 
four fonts for or four monospace fonts that you can get on Fedora. Um, so kind of an interesting thing from opensource.com that we learned. Uh, these kind of articles, we, we've kind of nicknamed them listicle articles. Yeah, actually, three ways to trick out your terminal emulator. That's a great example. Um, these kind of like listicle articles are actually, uh, hmm? yeah, they actually have a really great uh, engagement with readers. And even better, they're extremely easy to write. So if you just take a look at all these, so these are all linking. In this case, we're actually linking to articles that are already written on the Fedora magazine. But if you look at the, if you can scroll up just a little bit more, about how many sentences we have describing each of these different articles. Um, there's only just a little bit higher. Um, you see, like, that's just like one, two sentences for each, each of these articles that's kind of summarizing these big points. So to kind of turn that back about things that you could write about, if there's things that you're using in Fedora that's kind of like key for your workflow or things that you find that are really helpful, if you can kind of think of like, wow, like what are, like, in this case, it was like, what, I, I was just thinking like, what are three things that I'm doing in my terminal all the time that I think are super great? So I was like, oh, like I use Powerline and I use a couple of other things. And then I was like, well, three things you can do to customize your terminal interface. I'm trying to think of other like, um, these are the kind of things that would also be really great to brainstorm too. If there's like, if you can think of like a number of things that you're using already, like if you're using like Firefox extent, I don't know, Firefox extensions maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've done a few things. Of like yeah. Maybe a Firefox extensions article. Yeah, yeah. so it could even be an idea in itself. Like five Firefox like. extensions that either if it's like trying to help you do something. I think also tying it back to like that purpose question. Like if you can combine, in this case for like these listicle articles, if you can kind of combine that with a purpose, like in this case it was to make, make it easier to work in, in the command line or to make it look prettier. Um, so like for Firefox, in the example of like Firefox extensions, maybe it could be three Firefox extensions to help you protect your privacy. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of, like things like, if you can kind of follow that train of thought, like it's those kind of things that really actually engage pretty well with readers too. But that's not to say like traditional articles, like, like in this one, like all these are linking to articles we already wrote. So like Powerline on Fedora, that's its own article too. Um, but I guess enough of like me only talking too. Um, so if anyone does have um, ideas or, or things that we'd like to kind of, or like to kind of throw out there, we're just trying to get some ideas on starter pitches um, or things that people want to write about too. So we can kind of have those in our queue. Even if you're not ready to write about them and you think it's a cool idea, that's fine too. You don't have to yeah. throw out an idea right now. Yeah, if it's an idea that you think to yourself, this is something I'd like to see. Like I'd like to read this. I don't want to write it, but I'd love to read it. That, even that's great. So just to repeat that back, so I make sure I understood it. The, the idea was writing like a, a regular column or series on how to get started contributing to Fedora on the magazine with linking to things like easy fixes or ways that like really easy onboarding paths for people to get involved. Okay. So, and so one way to, like one way to approach that might be, sorry, I don't mean to be like taking a 
yep. over an over roll here. I'm just, I happen to be like near the projector. Um, so one way to think about that might be like, you know, if we had a template for that kind of article where you describe, yeah. you know, it, you could again, keep it short and focused. You could describe what is that project trying to do? Like what is the goal of that, of that particular initiative? Um, what are they having trouble with, right? Here's, in order to help, you need to have the following skills. If you do, here's who you contact or here's how you get in contact with that initiative, right? And you know something like that, I think, could be again keep you know keeping that short within that three hundred to six hundred word range. I think that would be pretty easy to do. And the scale of you know one of those every month or so, I think, is that's probably within the you know within the scope of of, uh, of the magazine, right? Um, right, and, and maintains enough of the focus. Yeah, and then I I would probably if I was to do that, I'd. If you're focusing on one project, I'd probably do a companion article on the community blog that actually does the detail of what, like, st like steps out some more detailed steps, and then more using the Fedora magazine is just the, the hook into the, the community blog. So the majority of the detail and the process and all the, the stuff that could be boring to someone that just uses Fedora and may not contribute. Then we it's over on the community blog, but then we have the hook on the magazine, which then we mail in the socials, and then so you, you may get one person that goes, hey, I can help there, and then jumps over the community blog, reads how to do it, follows the process, and then goes through. So um, yeah, I think the m one of the main ideas with what why the split happened was because the that kind of detailed community process stuff election interviews like there was that was sort of drowning out everything else and the actual value of the magazine of providing useful information to users mm -hmm. was drowned out by yeah. lots and lots of community stuff that 90% of people reading the magazine didn't really care about at this point so but having yeah that hook in to so they can go to the community blog and sort of get the, the, the more hardy how to, I reckon, would be a, a good. Yeah. Does that make sense? I, absolutely, absolutely. Right, and we can, yeah, and we can work with, you know, we can work with, uh, you know, any teams that are doing, like if you're doing this through uh, the ComOps team, for example, you know, we can work with you guys on um, fle on uh, fleshing out that template, right, so that we know it will score well um, in search engines and get readership, right? Because one of the, uh, you know, one of the pitfalls for having a template is that if the template is too simple um, it and it starts to appear like, say, a, 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 a course description, right, where you have a heading and a colon and then a very short description or something like that. Um, those types of articles, because they, they don't look like prose anymore, they don't look like uh, a long written form, they start to resemble computer-generated output forms, search engines push that away, right? So what we don't want to do is have the template be so simple that you're simply filling in forms like, an, like one line per entry because that results in an article that no one will read and search engines will push down, right? So, but again, you know, I think the, our team, what our team can do is kind of help uh, give the article the right, the right type of expansion so the template looks good. And I think, you know, again, the classroom, I think the classroom articles 
are a good example of this, with you know maybe the exception of the title, because I think we all kind of realized as we were doing this, and maybe I'm just I think maybe you were the person who pointed this out that the titles in the classroom simply call it you know classroom session number one, two, or three, like didn't really catch your eye very well, right? So that was something that we kind of you know realized as we baked it. Hey, we need to maybe improve our recipe here a little bit. So yeah, so we can kind of take what we've learned and, and help improve that that template. Um, so so we should so let's I, I let, are there other ideas for for articles? We've got a couple more people in here, but I'm not sure whether they're they're into brainstorming with us. But we'd love to. We love that's technical what, stuff. That's what a lot of us know. That's what we write about. So, um, yeah, it's technically great and we'd like more of it, but we just, I just, like, that, I don't know if you've read that article, but I really love reading it. So, that, and so for me, like, if, if it was in Fedora and you can do it in a, for me, that's something that's just, yeah, we can, that, that's got my blood flowing. Yeah, your audience might be like hardcore sysadmins who are using Fedora or a downstream distribution based on Fedora, like CentOS or RHEL, um, or might you know might be like that, you know, developer who's writing you know Node.js stuff. Like, here are some cool plugins for Node.js editing that you can use on your Fedora station. Yeah. Have you got any more? <laughs> that was a great one. Sorry. Popular. How how do you spell that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's probably not it. Don't. This is a lesson to Paul. Don't type in blind searches unless you know what's going to come up. That could have been worse. That could have been much worse. Beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So so a post that. So one thing that might be um, that we might want to think about. So let's 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 like live debug this as a pitch. Hocular seems like it's pretty flexible and pretty wide ranging. So you might want to think about how are you going to fit that Hocul all of Hocular into 300 to 600 words. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe this is how do you get it and install it? Is it packaged for Fedora already? Can you install it that way? Well, maybe that makes that part short. If you can't, you have to you know, grab it from upstream and compile it, then the actual grabbing, compiling, and installing of it is in itself an, an article, you know, not even counting how you actually use it. The other thing to think about is how good are the docs for Hocular itself on how to use it? Do we want to replicate those in Fedora? Probably not, but there might be a specific use case that you want to illuminate out of the docs, like here is a, here's a specific way to apply Hocular, right? Um, go back and read the first article on how to install it in Fedora, and then once you've done that, here's how you could use it to do the following, you know, really cool solution. That, you know. So I, I like it. I would definitely like, like right away, I would think like, how about how about installing installing Hocular, just bringing it up so it works in a machine. Like even that alone would be a great starter pitch.
456 right now. One way I could be like, if there was one that someone needs something specific on, like, oh, like, like caffeine. I see that one there. Like caffeine, how to keep your, like, I guess, how to keep your your monitor screen awake. That'd be like a specific one. We but this, we do. Okay, so in that case, yeah. But like, so, but building on that, one article actually I can think of right now. So if we have specific articles on gnome extensions, an easy one I can think of right now for gnome extensions to make your life easier with. That'd be like, so like, I'm trying to. Like, I don't, search customized gnome, what did you want to do? Did you want like something to make it you be more efficient or did you just want to customize the look and feel or like that's the kind of thing I think would be more help. Detailed, more customized. Yeah, so like maybe in this case like see like so like four ways to make gnome more a like, user or not it's not really a good title, but like user user friendly. But like these kind of things like see like there's a purpose there. Like there's four gnome extensions to do There yeah, you go. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, I'm putting that in here right now. Putting N GNOME extensions for developers. <laughs> I'm just putting them in. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know if this is an alpha or generic, because that's the other thing that sort of, to me, is sort of a dead cat. Um, you don't know what the alpha functions are in that particular way. In lots of cases, the alpha can be generic, alpha can be static. So you kind of think they're sort of one of the same. Oh, like introducing them. Yeah, it's just a whole, yeah, introduce basic like, sort of pairs to someone that doesn't know about gnome extensions or something. Yeah. Might be a really great like a long shelf life article too. Yeah. Um, so this is another kind of thing that I think is important or it's something that's nice I think about for articles. Um, there's articles like so in this case like what are introduction to GNOME extensions in awesome extensions for GNOME for developers or GNOME extensions for developers. Those are ones that generally have like a longer shelf life. Actually I'm looking at a lot of these and they're generally so long as the project remains active like they're popular and then some of these like they have a longer shelf life. The LX that's an article that would be more like a short term, kind of, uh, has a, it has a shorter shelf life on it. So how you write content for something like the LXQT spin, that you could obviously, you could make references to things that are happening now in Fedora. Like Fedora 26 just released not too long ago, and now there's a new LXQT spin. Like you can use language and you can make references to things that are more dated, yeah. like have a, have a deadline something like, in, like, what are GNOME extensions? 
keeping that generic, like without mentioning like Fedora 25, or like you can get your own extensions for Fedora 26 and 27, and uh, just the way you write articles that would have like that longer shelf life. Like GNOME extensions will be around for a long time, so the way you would write that, if you want to try to keep it generic without necessarily dating the article. So like I think if like if someone comes around in a year, will this article still make sense? Two years, I guess it's for GNOME extensions. Two years, will this article still probably make sense? Like for an introduction, that would probably be a pretty helpful one. Um, just because those articles also end up getting, you go to Google, GNOME extensions, what are introduction to GNOME extensions? Like that's the kind of articles that will, they'll pop up there. Um, and that also is better, like, those are really great articles too. They're really great articles because they last for so long. Like the LXPT article example, that would be really, be really cool for like two weeks and then they're like, okay, we have an LXPT extension. Sweet. It, it loses that, that valuable, like, really cool factor right yeah. when it comes out. Yeah. But like a GNOME, in fact, GNOME extensions, that's cool for, as long as it's yeah. current, it's cool forever. That's why, like, this would that's, be yeah. one for, like, designers in here, too. Yeah, so just make sure that gets in the um, the recording. Like, the, I think, uh, if, no. just tell me if I got this wrong, but I think the, the, the point that she was making was that, um, you know, having, going through a list like this where you have a, a, a use case, like, you want to do something, like, maybe you're doing development or you want to um, have your, you know, some, some feature in, in GNOME, for example, right? And so you can list several different ways to do that, right? That's, that's absolutely, like, that's a, that's a great use for an article. Um, I think what we don't, on, on the other hand, like, here's, here's the anti-case, right, the, the, or the anti-pattern, um, which is we don't want to have, like, just a, here's an opinion article, and here are the eight extensions that I use, right, that all do different things for different reasons, right, because those are always going to be a personal choice, and I feel like those articles have very little value to the reader because the reader is going to be in a different situation than you. Like, they may have different preferences, right? So there, that's, so, so there is, that's a, that actually, so the, the reason for the interviews, I think, um, well, sorry, so repeating again. So the, the comment was that um, that actually fits in well with, like, interviews. And you will, in fact, see those in the How Do You Fedora interviews that we do, where people do actually talk about, like, here's what I use versus other people. And that, that can also give people ideas about what they might want to try, right? As opposed to that, which actually has a personal face. Um, in other words, you have a person who is actually standing behind, like, here's what I use. That's a different stance than the magazine. Like when the, when a magazine article is published, and this is a subtle point, and, and maybe it's interesting to us as editors, but maybe everybody doesn't know this, is that the magazine itself um, has has an identity. In other words, the magazine speaks with a voice, but the magazine does not tell people what they should use. If I write an article, it's okay for me to write an article that says, here are four ways to do the following thing in Fedora. But for me to, in other words, if I, Paul Freelds, write an article, I'm not going to describe, it, it, it would not be a suitable article for me to write about, you know, a, a, a factual article about what I, Paul Freelds, use. Because the magazine is not intended as an editorial, um, uh, as an editorial uh, output. So, yeah, it's not a soapbox, right? The, the magazine doesn't speak with my voice. The magazine is a, is a, uh, I guess like an independent sort of objective view of the kind of things that Fedora wants to let people know and dictating to people what extensions are good and which aren't is really not our, our, the way we go, right? But we will tell them, here's like three extensions you can use to do this and you might like them, but we don't tell them, use these extensions, right? Because the magazine doesn't speak with that voice. Does that make sense at all? Yeah. Yeah. 
Right, right. So we'll, you know, we will talk sometimes about, yeah, and I think we, I tried to touch on this before. So that was, that was kind of a long comment. I'm going to see if I can encapsulate some of that, which is that, um, you know, there are, there are times that we will um, print articles that are about software that maybe Fedora doesn't itself, you know, become like the, the first proponent of, but we cover because it's available for Fedora and the fact that it's available for Fedora is a big deal. Um, and maybe a good example of this is uh, Netflix on Chrome, right? That's, a, that's from a few years back. But, you know, we, we know for a fact that out of all Fedora users worldwide, something like 50% of them install Google Chrome. Right, it's one of the first things they do is maybe they they are used to using it on other platforms, whatever. Instead of using Firefox, they install Google Chrome. That's a personal choice, and we don't get in the way of that. When when Netflix made Chrome, yeah, you can see like I'm one of them. I, I, you know, and so I it's I use both actually. I juggle them like I'll switch back and forth every few months just for fun because um, I'm an idiot like that. But um, uh, so we you know we know that when Netflix became available for Chrome out of the box. We know that a lot of people who are in high bandwidth uh, countries, they w love the fact that they could now watch Netflix on their Fedora laptop without bringing some other device with them. So that was a really big deal. And we wanted to make sure people knew, hey, if you really care about watching Netflix on your laptop, don't let that stop you from installing Fedora now because now you're going to be able to do it out of the box because you know Chrome is going to support it out of the box on Linux. And I think that's a little bit different because Right, um, right. Yeah, rather than yeah. you like, or I watch it, why don't yeah. you? Like, that's the yeah. voice. It's more about the way we deliver the information. Like, the fact that we yeah. deliver the information is not a, is not saying you have to use this. Yeah, yeah so Ryan's, Ryan's making the point. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, so to sum up, so Ryan was making the point that, um, you know, the reason some an article like that is okay with the magazine's voice is that we're not dictating to people that either that either that they should have to use Chrome or that they should have, you know, they should, everybody should go out and watch Netflix. You know, we're, we're not, we're simply not judging. We're, we're noting that, you know, we know from, you know, just from the metrics that are out there, we know that people, that there are people who use this stuff and, and like it. And we don't want that to stop them from using Fedora, right? In other words, I won't, I can't use Fedora because this is something that I like to do with my laptop and I haven't been able to do it. Well, the fact that they now can is an inducement for them to stop avoiding Fedora, so that's great. At the same time though, you know, the, the, the point for us is to preserve choice, right? We're not telling people that they ought to use this rather than that, right? Just since it came up about the how do you fedora, I just wanted to thanks for C Profit Plus Plus for all those awesome how do you fedora articles. So yeah, Charles Profit, if he's out there, is he's a god among men. He's he he does these interviews for us like all the time, and and it's a great great source of uh, it puts a human face on fedora that I, I really love because it's always a picture of a person. You know, it's not abstract. It's somebody out there who's doing something really interesting. And I think one other. Is that how you spell that? We'd like to see more is the more new, like, because we do a lot of these ones that last a long time, but in the past we've done ones like when Firefox every six weeks has a new release, we do a, a quick recap that's, hey, it's in Fedora now and it's available and doing that, getting that kind of ball rolling, but it's also very hard to sort of keep track of what's new and what's coming, like if, if it, obviously every tiny little point release of a package that, that comes through, we don't want to do, do a post for each one of them, but if it's a major release, like I think I've done ones in the past because I care about Inkscape, because I care about Inkscape, I've done sort of a, an article about that, so if we can, I don't know how to find the, find the best way of getting the information, I'll put up the bell list for people to, hey, if you've got a major release that you're packaging up, send us an email, and we've never got anything. So if yeah, if, if we could find a way to sort of get get that done ahead of time, so then we know when when it actually hits the repos, we can just go bang. Okay, we've got a new major release of this piece of software, or a new something that's important about 
so getting those new D ones rolling. Um, and I think in the past we've sort of just slotted them in between the actual posts to more more informative posts, but this is like a, a news post, so we like doing those too. Other than the releases, we don't do them much anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like about the pictures is you can just throw them in and you just send an email to this and say, hey, I had this idea, here's a, here's a new package or a, an updated package. And then yeah, I'm always looking for new ideas to sort of get out and dry sometimes. So having a new package to sort of yeah, jump in and write about, that would be, yeah. Just I love when people just throw pictures in, especially nice. Sorry? Uh, oh, Mycroft. You know, I, th I want to say that somebody pitched that a while ago and just never showed up to write it. But that's, it's not in here now, Mycroft. Um, yeah, it's like the, it's the, it's an AI engine for like voice recognition and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, is this something that you're interested to write? Either or, yeah, is so the question was if uh, I'm putting in all these, oh great, there's no internet connection suddenly, that's awesome. Um, so the question was, uh, so I'm putting all these pitches in, um, in, in hopefully a helpful way, and how would somebody then claim one of these? Because should they get in touch with us through the IRC, through IRC or through a mailing list? The answer is yes, any of those, any of those will work. And what we'll do is um, those of us who have the, the admin or editorial access, we can reassign um, posts, and so we'll just flip it over to your Fedora account, and that basically gives you the all the access that you need to continue drafting, et cetera, et cetera. Just to put that onto the, the recording too. So if you want to write an article that we have in the starter pitches, all you have to do, if you see one that you like when you log in in the magazine, just let us know on the mailing list or an IRC. We'd love to see you when you say hello. We will give you an answer. Uh, so just if you do see an article that you want to write, just log into the magazine, check out what's there. And if you want to write, just let us know. And we can reassign the article to your Fedora account. So then you'll have the full rights to edit the article, to make changes, and you can do all that without without any limitations. But you just gotta, just let us know if you see an article you want. Don't be afraid to be like, hey, I wanna take a stab at this and give it a go. The internet's very slow in here. I blame that guy in the back. No, I'm just kidding. You're not downloading an ISO right now or something, no. There you go. Oh, I'm on, I'm on the other one right now. I, I switched just a minute ago. Yeah, so cool. Mic on the mic. Yep, there you go. So last year we had 2.4 million page views, and so far this year we're like we're about we're about 1.95 so far. Our goal was um, three million for the year, and uh, I'm still optimistic. But, um, but um, the last release was it was our biggest month ever. I think we had 300. 
35,000 monthly patrons. So, and most of them are um, and, and pretty good engagement too. So, I think yeah. So, too. I don't know if this is coming through on the on the screen or not, but you know, if you can look, just imagine like the trend line here. So it's basically up and to the right. Um, the peaks kind of throw the scale off a bit, right? Because those peaks that you see are essential. Those are Fedora GAs right there. So that's people hitting the release announcement, which gets linked all over the world and from, you know, on other different sites. But if you look at like the average, you know, back here in 2014, 2015, we were averaging, eh, you know, a hundred and some thousand a month hits. And now we're, you know, kind of more up in the 200 and some thousand. So, yeah. So Was the, I'm sorry, what was the question? Um, I think we average, like, we, we pretty much are living in pre order. Yeah. So, yeah, like, during the, like, yeah. Yeah, it'll be like 12 to 15 a month, basically. And we'd love that to be more. And the issue for us has been simply finding authors who are willing to, you know, come in with an idea and then, you know, commit to writing it. and finish their article, right? I mean, it's basically, it, it's it's no different than any other problem in open source, right? Which is people who are willing not only to come with an idea, but the commitment to do it. The nice thing about the magazine is you don't need a lot of special skills to finish your commitment. Whereas, you know, fixing a bug can often go way beyond a, a new user's ability to deal with, right? Even what we might call an easy fix bug can often get really, really complicated. But the great thing about an article is that if you can write text, you can write an article. It doesn't really scale beyond a user's skills or abilities. So, you know, I think there's there's probably other, I don't know, maybe there are other, there may be other like social barriers or things that are, you know, maybe we have yet to uncover. But I think the, the key for us is expanding our pipeline of users, right? Ex expand, I'm sorry, expanding our pipeline of contributors to the magazine, right? If we had, let's say for example, we had um, 10 people uh, who were willing to write one article a month, right? That's again, only 300 to 600 words a month. Uh, most of us write single emails that are longer than that. Well, a lot of us do, I know I do. Um, much to the chagrin of the people who have to read them. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's not a whole lot of writing only, you know, to do only one a month. But if those 10 people were writing once a month, our output on the magazine would probably go up by 50 to 100%, right? And out of those articles, every article is almost guaranteed to have tens of thousands of people who look at it, right? Or tens of thousands of page views, right? Uh, this, this graph would take off, like, in a crazy way if that happened. So yeah, our, our you know maybe our one of our unstated goals is to find like those ten people essentially, <laughs> and then kind of school them in how to how to come in with greater and greater ideas. Yeah, so the question was, what is the motivation to write? Well, so, you know, obviously we like to find people who like to share knowledge. And what I've, I guess what I've found in, like, docs, uh, docs people or other writers um, are, are that they are at heart their teachers. So there's a lot of self-fulfillment from that. But in addition to that, yes, we do have badges as well. So if, you have, if you've done an article that gets a certain number of hits, um, I can't remember what the levels are off the top of my head. One five and twenty five k page views. Okay, so and and the 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 first so the three levels are one k, twenty five k, and fifty k. Oh, sorry, did I just get the wrong one five and twenty five k? Right. So each of those is a badge level that you can get, and I can tell you right now, the first, definitely the first one, usually the first two, are it's almost a guarantee that you're going to get two badges out of writing an article. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, if it's your first article, you might get three, yeah. yeah. So yeah, there are badges. In fact, we probably ought to set up some other ones. Now that the some of these articles have been around long enough, they've gathered more page views, we probably ought to think about setting up like a 50 and 100K. I almost asked that with the Nordic, which yeah. there was a yeah. lot of articles that actually like went online through Swift Web Link. Mm -hmm. Even for the 50K badge, you only got like 
Yeah. I went through that uh, last week and I didn't feel any of the top articles from last yeah. week. Yeah. I think you actually have a lot that kind of drives some discipline in that um, paying attention to everything else. Yeah. So that's a great place to kind of make sure that you have a level like. And that's just from the last week. Yeah. Months. So, oh, sorry for that. So, for the mic, we were just having, we were just saying that there's, there's definitely a distribution of page view, number of page views for articles, and Justin has done some research on the articles over the last eight months, and that might basically lead us to, um, ha as add some extra badge levels as well, right, where we could um, have have some other inducements. Oh, you know, it might worth it might be worth noting here some of our referrals as well, right? You can tell that like search engines, for example, number one referral is Google Search by a factor of a gazillion. Um, but we also get hits from DuckDuckGo, Bing. Apparently, someone uses that. I guess uh, Yandex. I don't even know that was a thing. I, I have no idea why AT&T has their own search engine referral, but thank you guys. Thank you, AT&T, for that one hit. Um, also, we get a lot of hits from start.fedoraproject.org, which is why start.fedoraproject.org does not die, because it refers quite a lot of traffic to the magazine. Yeah. Yeah, start.fedoraproject.org is the homepage for Firefox. Yeah. Oh, that's a neat idea. So Justin's idea is a badge for referring a new writer. So in other words, you refer a new writer, they write an article, right? Complete an article, like complete an article through the process. So it's a manual, but it's a manual badge, but it can be done. That that's yeah, we like we can scale to that. Is it a badge for referring someone else to write for the magazine? Like I'm encouraging them to write. Um, and if you know someone who's technically referred, you can you can be coached. If Nice. Yeah, we're getting close to seven million all-time views. That's not bad, considering like you know, because the you know, the last how how long like three years maybe has been our our big our biggest our bigger push yeah, for it. Looking good. Mag I always like to see that up and to the right is always good. And the, the next release would be a Fedora Coke. Yeah, yeah. We expect the Fedora Twenty Seven release is gonna is gonna pop way up above the above the standard month. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can read that. So what Ryan's saying, so that's 261,000 page views in August. We've got, a, what, a couple days, what, one day, two days left in August. So August is our, out of non-release months, August is our best month ever, right? And that's been a great sign, right? As if we can go through month by month, more often than not in the past year or year and a half that we've been looking at it, each month has become like, oh, this is our best non-release month ever. Oh, again, this month is our best non-release month ever, right? That's a good sign because it shows the, the page views are going up. So yeah, uh, that the question was, is Chromium an Apple? I have no idea. Probably, yeah. I, that would be a good question for Spot, maybe. If you find out, let us know. Is Chromium an Apple? Oh, so, well, actually, so I think the point was is that if, because 
uh, spot packages Chromium, yeah, set the homepage for Chromium to the same star.fedoraproject.org, and we're all of those Apple users out there who might be using the packaged Chromium suddenly yeah. are gonna be seeing the magazine. Feed. Easy sell article. If that's, yeah. if that's not happened yet, or if it's something that's a work in progress, the action title would be awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I do have some ideas, some more pitches to throw in. Um, I'm thinking of are how you might to use Thunderbird. Yeah. Oh. Just a few more pitches we could throw in right now to um, how to how to use Thunderbird mail filters and then uh, in fi Thunderbird extensions to improve your privacy or to or to protect your privacy. And then if I, I'm trying to think now of like all these things that I'm thinking I should go out and going through all of my apps I'm thinking like what, what am I what am I what am I doing on my floor? What what am I what do I think I'm using? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that'd be a good. Yeah, this was that something. That would have been the same issue that was stopping them with Fedora. Yeah. That was that was your pitch, right? Did I get that right, Justin? I think they call it add-ons. Oh, add-ons. Um, okay. So it's just a small detail. Yeah, that would actually be a is super that, one. Is that extension still up? I haven't seen it. Oh, yeah, is it an extension? Like wait, wait, so wait, you mean like how to? There was an email conversation to use the Thunderbird that I wanted to use and it sort of stopped working and then I put it in my thread and it didn't work. Oh, okay, all right. All right, so we're getting on the time that um, that um, that 5.30 WSL is coming up, so I need to run out. If I'm going to cover that, then I need Pop this out. Um, I'm really happy to help. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody have some last pitches they'd like to throw out before we, we wrap up? Any yeah. last minute ideas? Colonel benchmarking. Colonel oh, benchmark. Colonel like benchmarking. Wait. So, is this a is this a proposal to do kernel benchmarking work, or is this a is this something that would be a, a, a process that like some any kernel developer or any kernel interested person might do because it's it has value to them? I'm sorry. Like, how fast is my hardware? Okay. There you go. Done.